Welcome to the Game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today, we are doing Tutor Tuesday, where I review a subscriber game and help them and you, the viewer, get better at the Game of Risk. Today's game, I have a special treat for you. I have a game from the number four Risk player on the free for all leaderboards, Speedster, using his main settings, which is Yorp Advanced, Fog and Blizzards, Progressive Capital Conquest. This guy is a legend. So go check him out on Twitch, go check him out on YouTube. This guy is the real deal. As we look more into the game, so we can see right here, Fog plays a significant element immediately speedster could have gone here to potentially take over the region however with the purple player potentially capping here which is a common spot as it is a one border area this was not going to be a good location so capping over here on the side can normally be very good we don't see where the other players are within like uh, the fog so generally we would expect to see some players going for like this area of the board people holding down like uh, this continent individuals holding the corner of the board like uh, right here and in speedster's case what is interesting is even though his main he has his main army here he chooses to spend his initial turn going for the continent like uh, right here generally because it's very very um off to the side and not very confrontational additionally you're attacking trying to do, win this here with a 4v2. A little risky right there, but you're trying to get that initial game advantage. Now you also rolled these 2v1s. I think this was a little bit more of a mistake because as you can see right here, the purple player uh, you saw was, was had their main cap here, which means they were likely to have been going for a continent uh, at this time. What's also um, interesting is that you saw the white player have a large army attacking. Now they're at eight troops. They're probably above 12 territories and they capped right here. So the white player is going to be in conflict with the purple player right here, which is good for you because you're off in the corner. The red player also doesn't have like any continent. So they're either going for this area here, uh, given that red men may have this part here, or they're going down for somewhere down here. So whoever's down here, whether it's red um, or pink, it looks like maybe some conflict will form from them down in this spot and then maybe whoever left is here will take like this area of the board and then purple will hopefully expand out this way but if purple chooses to go this way that'll be a problem for you because already at 10 troops right now per turn this is also what makes the fog a little bit difficult but also adds a higher level of skill uh, within the game you don't know what's going to be happening around the board as you attack you have to kind of make inferences what's also unique because you're playing on europe advanced with like like fog and blizzards is a lot of the player base because this is like the second most popular map outside of the classic map a lot of um individuals really enjoy and understand how this map works right you don't want to be attacking players right away for getting continents because they're naturally going to be getting continents themselves. And if everybody's getting a continent and you try to breathe the board police, they'll end up just breaking you and you'll just fall behind getting three to five troops per turn and just you'll end up losing the game. So the name of the game is Continental Expansion and Being Greedy. So in this case right here, Speedster, the number four player is using a technique where when he is trying to take a region, he's using the Zombie Fist Pound, which again was given to free for anyone who had an account around the uh, Halloween time period. Uh, I bought most of these like Fist Pound emojis because I got a lot of um, gems from winning the 1v1 tournament. But again, everyone should have at least a Zombie Fist Pound. That's a great way in non-alliance games to communicate to players, hey, let's do an alliance. You're communicating to the purple player to not be attacking you here as this is your area of the board and you're hoping that purple ascent goes down here we can also see since green is getting a lot of troops they probably now own these continents and the board is now getting more established at this time 
where white, red, and pink are all probably within this area of the board with now purple moving down into here. And then white also gonna has their main capital trapped up here. So they're probably doing multiple things uh, at once. It's hard to predict exactly what is happening because again, you don't see any of this. As long as players are not attacking you, it can be very easy continue taking your own individual territories and building up. So instead of getting a huge continent, you're just focusing on taking out other players of the board. And this is what a lot of high level risk players do. You wanna shut out the lights of other players uh, when you can. Now in this case, we can see purple getting a tremendous number of troops and now going downwards. One, this is probably one small mistake speedster. You probably could have attacked a little more aggressively trying to take out like, like the purple player because we know that green is most likely not like um, doing much. Right? But in this case, you're lucky purple decided to go down. But after having around three to four turns overall on the board and heading into turn five when people are trading in their sets, we can see immediately all of speedster's opponents because again, we're playing intermediate to grandmaster uh, with these settings. They all kind of know at least like the basic rules of not turning in a set until they absolutely have to in progressive to have the biggest card trade as possible for themselves. We can also see from the way that that red's attacking, they're probably offline because we saw the arrow and the way that they moved. So that means red's probably going to be eliminated, most likely gone to a conflict either with the pink or the white player. They lost their position. We can see right here as well that the leader's two of six, they probably lost their cap due to under defending it. Now another nice thing that Speedster is doing, because he's understanding all of this intuitively when the game as it's going on, is he's leaving twos on his borders when defending. It's very non-confrontational. You're not having an army directly into like the eyes of another opponent, but it's just puts a nice little psychological barrier where players just won't be attacking you like as much. Now, one thing you end up doing is you end up making one more attack and you're almost blocking off your cap. Now, in the short term, that's not going to be a big deal if you end the game quickly. But in late game, if you're against very, very talented opponents, this can be very bad because if your cap lacks mobility, you're not going to be able to attack uh, around the map and you can get card blocked. Because remember, this is progressive caps, right? You need to take all caps on the board in order to win. So if the other players are very advanced, they can overcome your initial territory advantage and troop count. If they survive to the late game, you're going to be in trouble. In this case though, since you're correctly like kind of or holding this whole area of the board and no one's attacking you, you're about to snowball. Yep, and now we can see white has eliminated the red player. So again, because probably the red player was overextending, the red player is now out of the game and we have entered the five player scenario at this time. Pink, it looks like yeah, they've been out down here and it looks like they'll maybe want to be expanding down into this way, this way. Again, it looks like no one's really expanding into you, which is very, very fortunate. That you're at a very healthy um, count. And for everyone here that's watching, like this is what like the best players on ladder do. Like progressive caps is a very, very good setting to be on. And Europe Advance is one of the most high level maps out there. It's very popular in the map pool. And you can see the things that Speedster is doing, right? Attacking with the minimal number of troops when going and attacking around the board, having a nice like guard borders for like major continents that they're like trying to hold taking advantage of the blizzard and knowing when items are available. But now we can see as these attacks are being made, the purple player is deciding how high up like they want to go. Because Speedster left these minimal borders of like a six, it prevents him from getting tremendous amounts of damage taken to him, right? So he's balancing the strength of his cap, keeping it very strong. Like no one's gonna be hitting your cap. A good rule I follow is as long as someone's having a cap size or your cap size is greater than like the trade in on the board, in general, you're not gonna be like hit unless someone's fully capping on, on just one area and, and they wanna go all in hitting you. Speedster is balancing, taking over his area of the map, defending it with like light borders without overwhelming it, balance on his cap. It's a very light, tough item like to hold. And again, he's using his like, um, his mechanic of like the fist pound to tell people he wants to be their friend. 
And now, because you saw the purple players potentially attacking for it, and it's only getting five troops, looks like the green player, who had like, like what, like 30-ish on his cap, decided to hit the purple player. They've now lost their only continent. And this is why you should not be attacking other players. They're just going to reciprocate just hit you back and then both players get weaker purple's play attacking before was a significant mistake and has put them behind speedster has gotten their continents quickly but no one contested this area of the board which is now giving him a big advantage my only worry is the borders that he has over the pink player and if pink gets threatened they're going to want to hit him because pink probably has this continent and now the troops that they've gotten around 18 they're probably getting this one right here. At some point they feel threatened, they may decide to go into you, which could hurt your early game expansion. And pink could easily go around your cap and not open up this 43, which is where the main strength of your army is. At this time though, you speedster are so, so strong. I think. Honestly, besides something very early game when like you're over attacking like a tiny bit and taking some risky rolls for a content, we can maybe try to wait a little bit. Like your moves are just so, so solid. It's crazy. Like this is what the fourth best player in free for all does you guys. And now look, purple is, looks like they're trying to go for a kill on someone and they're failing. Uh, Speedster didn't even have like a set on four cards. He had to wait till five. He had so many extra troops that he was able to overcome it. And now look, green is pissed. Green is now attacking the purple player aggressively and the purple player is now extremely weak. White's still getting 15 troops. So again, they're still probably owning this area, maybe the bottom area of the board a little bit. And now there, white's trading in. Guys, you're about to see why Speedster is one of the best of the best on progressive caps and that he leads the leaderboards. He is so, so good. And when, when all the other players are attacking him, he's balancing, keeping his side of the board safe while being able to make this move and attack and like honestly like i've always thought that if i've had pretty good mechanics because i'm like mostly known as for being a 1v1 player but again we're seeing everyone going down and attacking they're not attacking you because you just took your corner they lost and you see right here when you're in the fog you may see how players attack the 25 was lost that means there was a, a significant amount on the cap so now this is going to be speedsters time to shine you guys look at the way that he majestically attacks around the board balancing attacking and eliminating a player in this case pink who lost a lot attacking a cap with another player pink gets eliminated so easily but now we get to an interesting situation where we have to ask ourselves where is the purple player right because you want to figure out where they're located and they can be in two spots right here, right? Because this is where the key part of the game is coming up right here. How do we advance the game? So what Speedster does when you can't see through the fog is that you start attacking a little bit more. It's clear that probably white owns this area. So he breaks the cap and there is purple. And that makes sense, right? Because that was purple's original cap. Like white did a good job trying to hide the kill, but Speedster has that sixth sense about knowing what to do. And now Speedster is very close to breaking the balance of the game. He, when he recognized that Pink was weak, he quickly eliminated them. And then he was able to guess and use the, the movement to eliminate Purple. This movement is so majestic. So even though he's losing some troops right here, it's not anything crazy. You can see that Green is trapped in this one location. Maybe Speedster will lose a couple of continents for themselves, but look, he has three capitals. He has this continent. He's still getting all these troops, and he has a six trade in, and he's saving his wild, completely dominating the board right here. And by leaving these stacks around, he's able to majestically attack around the map. And look at this white player can just do nothing except get eliminated immediately by Speedster. This is just pure carnage right here. And now we can see the most beautiful part of this end game. We know where the green player is located and very late game and progressive caps. The best thing that you can be doing for yourself is setting up a 
a, a, um, a card block where the other player can't get any more cards. The green player is on one card and will be getting only one continent. There was one little mistake that you made where you could have potentially not left any troops here. But honestly, that card block was perfect and so mechanically well done. You cleaned up the green player and absolutely crushed it the game, Speedster. And guys, that is how the number four player acts on the ladder. If you guys are enjoying this content, please consider subscribing. This is Olive XC, signing off.